Well, as you saw in the previous video, I decided to uh, Bluetooth my bumper cap. Um, so it definitely does not match the other one, but I've been spending way too much time working on that thing. Good news is we have a replacement bumper there. So, but obviously I just got home from work, still in work clothes here. So I'm gonna get changed. And then uh, first things first, we are going to remove this old bumper. So uh, one of the struggles I've been having with being able to film content for you guys is getting off work in the afternoons. And then, uh, you know, with the sun going down semi early now, it, it's tough for me to film when it's dark. So uh, this might be a multi-day kind of project, but uh, definitely over the next couple days, we'll get it done. So I'll get changed. We'll get this old bumper pulled off. All right, so first thing I gotta do is I gotta get all this electrical loose. Uh, you know, obviously I zip tied it in there pretty good. Get all this backed up, um, get it all pulled away from everything, pull it all off in one piece. And that way I don't have to worry about any of the plastics or anything coming off separately because as you can see there's a bunch of these like plastic tabs, some nuts and bolts and stuff that's like down under all of that. Um, and I have a feeling that it's going to be easier to just take it all off in one piece. So I'll just like unplug these lights up in here. Uh, first thing I am going to do though is I'm going to measure from the ground to the bottom of here and see what that measurement looks like uh, for ground clearance in the rear end. And then we'll see once the new bumper's on what that increases to. All right, so all the electrical, everything's out all the way across. The only thing I gotta do now, I gotta pull these four bolts on both sides. Uh, sorry, these four bolts come all the way out. This one and the one matching one on the other side get loosened. And then these two bolts under here, sorry, that's probably sideways. These two bolts under here get taken out. And then theoretically, the bumper should come right out. So, uh, get you guys a better camera angle here and uh, see if it comes right out. Almost forgot the measurement. We are at 16 inches exactly. So 16, 16 and a 16th if you want to get real technical. So, all right. Get the old one out of here. Well, the old bumper's off. You look right here there's a little dowel pin there's one on each side and they go right up in here you can see this right here let's see if i get some light behind it there right here there's a little slot that they go in and it hook it goes in and then down and it's got like almost a little like lip on it so when you go to pull that bumper off it's got to come up evenly up and then back um, and that's what was just giving me trouble, but I was able to get them off there. So bumpers all off now, uh, pull the rest of the little pieces off, uh, out from underneath the tailgate here and get that all cleaned up, uh, get it ready to put the end cap pieces on. We haven't really talked about those yet. So right here, uh, when you order your bumper, they actually send you steel end caps. So I decided to paint match them. You don't have to. I've got this side. But they go basically right there like that. And then see how your body line like matches up down the side. So those go on and then the bumper mounts under it. And then that's what you use for your line to cut on. 
So um, as you can see from the bottom of these all the way down, I mean, that's a, that's a good, oh, I don't know, seven inches or so that's gonna come off the back end here of that bedside. So we'll definitely measure all that out, tell you about that also. Um, anyways, I decided to paint match these. So they are painted, um, they need to be wet sanded and cleared. So I'll get those taken care of here in the next day or so also. Um, but as you're seeing right now, I'm already losing daylight. So finish getting this. Uh, the other thing that I'm gonna do for you guys real quick is I'm gonna weigh the factory bumper. Um, I mean, I've added a couple little LED lights, but we also lost a little plastic piece. So call that a wash, but I'm gonna weigh it. And we're about to see uh, right now how much the factory bumper weighs versus what the aftermarket bumper weighs. I say that they're about the same. Uh, if not, the aftermarket one might weigh a little bit less, but everybody else seems to think that the aftermarket one weighs more. So, I'll tell you shortly. The zero. Day two, I mean, I guess technically day three because I already used one day painting these, but I noticed some spots that were a little light and kind of showing through. You can kind of see that little burn through right there. So as I was wet sanding, um, there was some orange peel and stuff. I want to get that taken care of and realize that they, they need another coat. So I'm going to do it right. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I already wet sanded everything. I already wiped it all down. Um, I'm gonna add another coat onto them, we'll let that set up and dry, and then I'm just gonna hit it with like some 1200 uh, wet sand, maybe 1000 wet sand it again, and then I'll start clear coating it. And I've got a small bottle of clear coat, and I'm basically just gonna coat it as many times as I can with that bottle. So here we go. So, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up in the light, but if you look, like right here, you can see some like pitting, um, just some like texture to it. Basically, that's what I was trying to eliminate with the next coat, and by building the paint up on that, it allows me to wet sand it back down smooth. Um, this one, <clears throat> This one doesn't look too bad. Um, it actually looks pretty good. I may not even need to wet sand this one at all. It's got pretty good. So I don't know that the camera's gonna pick it up, but if you can see like right in here, I'll see if I can bring it out in the resolution. There's just a tiny little bit of orange peel. So that orange peel is in any factory paint. So even when you're looking at uh, a factory vehicle, it has a little bit of orange peel in it. Um, let me see if I can even show you here, like on my truck, you might, the camera might not even pick it up, but even right in here, there's, there's some orange peel. So we'll uh, get those wet sanded and get a uh, first coat of clear coat on them. Go from there. All right, got the end caps all clear coated. Uh, they're in the garage now, uh, drying, kind of curing, whatever. I'll leave them in there for uh, probably the rest of the afternoon. So now, something that I forgot to mention previously, uh, license plate light. So I found this one. The only thing I didn't like about it is once you mount it, so it mounts uh, like this to the bumper and there would be all of this light that can come through here, even though the lights are mostly straight down and it's kind of diffused, um, all of that extra light is going to the rear. We do enough nighttime trail runs and stuff that I don't wanna have that happen. Um, so what I did is I taped it off on the sides that I do want the light coming out of. 
and then I'm using some of this uh, VHT nightshade stuff. And this stuff works really good. It's what they use to like tint tail lights with. Um, so I'll put a couple of coats of that on there and that way you'll still be able to see the light through it in that point, but it'll be tinted, it'll be darker. So I'll show you when it's all together. Anyway. So this is an important part. When you're marking it, you can see where that black mark is. If you look at where that is in relation to the hole, you can see that the center of the hole is about at the bottom of the mark because of the angle that the Sharpie goes in there. So keep that in mind. So right here, I drilled that first hole and now right here, I've already center punched this one. So I'm gonna pilot drill it with a smaller drill bit and then what I'm gonna do, this one was a quarter inch hole. This one, I'm gonna drill the next size up to where I have a little bit of play for adjustment in there for that piece and I'm not fighting it all the time. And that way we can get it in there and get it bolted in uh, nice and good. Now the other thing is, is that this little bump out in the body line here, that metal sits right up against there. So what I'm gonna do is for these bolt holes, I'm gonna go ahead and go probably down to the local hardware store and I'm gonna get a couple of white nylon washers to sandwich between there for these bolt holes so that it doesn't have uh, any issues tightening up to the body and uh, I'm not crushing that piece trying to pull these in, so. All right, when you're getting these set up, you get your holes drilled, you get everything kind of lined up. The easiest way to do that with drilling your holes, I didn't mention this before, is take the washers that are included in the kit to mount your bumper to the frame down there. Um, there's, there's, I don't know, a handful of these big washers in here, big fender washers. If you tape those washers to the top of this piece, it gives you that gap under your tail light. Because what'll end up happening is your bumper is hard mounted to the frame. Your bed is not hard mounted and it'll have some flex in it. So as your bumper, as you start getting into different positions, your bumper will actually come up and hit this and it'll give some flex. And if it flexes enough or you take a hard impact, it'll come up and smack your tail lights. So what you want to do instead, give a little gap between your uh, end caps and your tail lights, give a little gap before your end caps and your bumper, and then give a little gap between your bedside and your bumper as well. Um, so now what we're going to do is, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but this is actually running at a slight downhill. That is the line that you follow to cut your bumper at. So I'm gonna run some tape and then I'll run a uh, straight edge on there and run a Sharpie marker. So I'll uh, time lapse that for you so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Also, gap in here, I just went down and got some nylon uh, washers. So I've got some smaller ones, but I gotta drill the center hole out a little bit bigger, so I'll mess with that later. But by spacing these out, it allows you to adjust this and keep this end cap tucked in over here. What you hear a lot of people talking about on these trucks with these bumpers is that this end cap isn't very secure and it feels like it's flopping around. One of the reasons for that is if you just tighten it down over here on the side and don't put anything in the middle of there, it pulls it all the way to that side and it takes it off the edge over here and kind of unwraps it. By locking it in this side and then using your washers over here, it kind of squeezes it all together and allows it to sit real nice and flush and keep that nice body line coming right down your tail light, right down the edge of that piece. All right, I've got this all lined out. I meant to time lapse it and just got sidetracked and didn't set it up. So basically what I did is I took a piece of tape right up here and I started it along this line and then I stretched it out and kind of took it down the best I could. Then I took a long piece of flat metal and did the same thing and just set it along that line, drew my line out as far as I could, pushed it down in the middle, kept the line going. So, should be fairly straight, looking down it, should be pretty good. I did a second line a quarter of an inch off of the first one because I wanted to see if I was gonna drop that down a little bit and leave me some slack, but 
I don't think I'm going to. Um, I think I'm just going to go for it. So the only other issue that I have is everybody else that gets these bumpers has fender flares. And when you have fender flares, what they tell you to do is pop your fender flare off, drill the hole through for the bed brace, and then put your fender flare back over it to cover the bolt. I don't have fender flares, so I have nothing that's going to cover that bolt. So instead, um, I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm just going to use a carriage bolt and just push it through the outside. It's going to look a little funny, but I'm not actually sure that it'll get noticed that much. So um, I don't really have any other option uh, because the way that the bed stiffeners go in. And once you make that cut, there's nothing left to hold the bottom of the bedside, so it gets kind of floppy. Um, and with the wheeling and stuff that we do, I, I definitely don't want it floppy. So I'd rather have just kind of a odd looking carriage bolt head sticking out the side of the bed um, than have it all flopping around and potentially crack something uh, down the road. So we're getting ready to cut. Um, I guess here goes nothing. I'll definitely time lapse that for you because it's a little nerve wracking. I mean, that's six inches, seven inches off the bedside. It's kind of a lot. So here we go. All right, so on the other side, I showed you using the Sharpie how to mark holes. If you're not comfortable with that and you want something that's a little bit more accurate, um, what you can do is you just take a grease gun, take your bolt that's going through the hole, put a little bit of grease just on the very end of it, just right on the end, just like that, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your piece now that your hands are all greasy, you're going to put it up in place. Again, I taped the washers to get my spacing. I'm going to put it up in here. I'm going to get everything aligned the way that I want it and set up perfect. And then you're going to take your bolt with your grease in it, and hopefully without moving anything, reach up in there. in your hole, get it all lined up, push it through, and then it should make a grease mark on the body. So now you know where to drill for your first hole. It's not ideal, but it's another option. All right, let's talk for a second about all these lines on here. So this first line was the line that I kind of eyeballed coming down off there. Looked pretty straight, pretty good. But when it landed, it landed way up here. And I know for a fact that this little hole right here, when I cut the other side, I cut it right to the top of that notch. So there's a big difference there. So I went back and tried to do it again, came in, and I think right here it kind of wiggled. Mm, not good. So I verified through measuring that this hole was in fact the one from the other side. And then I just ran my straight edge straight from there. So it's not always gonna be the exact same measurement. It's not gonna be the same line. It's not always gonna look the exact same because these differences could be nothing more than how this was cut Maybe this was cut a little bit higher. That angle was a little flatter on this one versus the other side. Either way, 
I'm going with this bottom line. That's the line I'm gonna hold true to so it'll match the other side. All right, so here's the pieces we cut off the bed. At the back towards the bumper, uh, looking at about five and a half inches. And at the front towards the fender, about seven. So uh, about seven inches of your bedside that needs to come off. Uh, don't worry that these don't match because I just eyeballed them when I stuck them on there, so. So it's been a few days since we got uh, the whole bumper installed. As you can see, added some graphics, uh, went ahead and tried to get everything adjusted pretty well. Um, I, I still don't, wouldn't mind this gap being a little less. You can see it's a little tighter up here. Uh, it's just kind of difficult to adjust because the, the way that the bumper kind of squeezes on the frame. So overall, definitely uh, like the bumper. I would 100% suggest it to anybody. I know that sometimes the lead times get a little much. Uh, but it is well worth the wait. Joe's an awesome guy, he makes a phenomenal product. Um, I've got my license plate on there. I'll show you this real quick. So you can see, I've got the license plate mount on here. Um, here's the light that we painted. The license plate has a little bit of flexibility to come back if I do hit anything on a big obstacle. Got some lights that uh, mount up under here, just haven't installed those yet. But uh, overall, definitely a great product. Could not recommend it more. Uh, install was pretty simple. So let's get the uh, moment that I'm sure everybody's been waiting for. We'll get this measurement down here again like we did previously. I'll set the camera up at the same, same angle and we will see uh, how much clearance we gained. All right, previously we were at right at 16 inches, 16 and I think a 16th maybe. And now we are at Looks like 23 and a quarter to the bottom of the rail. Now, obviously, if we're getting into some bigger obstacles, I would have to uh, take my tire down and throw it in the back of the truck. But for everyday use, the tire stays in there. So we gained, uh, was that about seven inches of clearance? That's a lot for your uh, departure angle. So hope this helps everybody out. Definitely appreciate everybody watching. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to answer anything I can. See you on the next one.